Hello and welcome to Miss Bailey's Daily Dose. Today we are going to be learning to inform and we're going to create a diary entry recounting events in our lives. So, what is a diary? So you might know what a diary is. If you don't, here are some pictures of some diaries and we'll have a little look at what you think a diary entry is. So, thinking about why people might want to write a diary. A diary is recounting somebody's feelings, experiences and things that have happened in their lives. So it might be that they want to keep a record of it. So in years and years to come, they can open up that diary and say, right, 10 years ago, this is what I was doing on the 12th of May 2020. Tuesday, the 12th of May 2020, or whatever you like. So it might be that they want to safeguard those memories and they remember them, because as we get older, we forget some of the things that we've done. It might be like, for example, Samuel Pepys in The Great Fire of London. His diary entry was recounting the history of The Great Fire of London. And we've now got that diary as a piece of evidence. So it could be that you wanting to create a diary to become famous so we can find out something historical. Just like recounting coronavirus. That diary entry could be a key piece of history that shows what life was like in England, in rugby, during the coronavirus. So that could be a reason why you might want to write a diary entry. So a diary entry is a book in which one keeps a daily record usually. It could be daily, it could be weekly, um, of what they've done, of their key things that they've done during that day. And it recounts what's happened. So the features of a diary entry is the next thing that we're going to have a look at. What needs to be included in a diary entry to make it really good? So here's an example of a diary entry. This is the diary of a stone age child. Dear Diary, today was the most incredible day of my life. Shall I tell you what I did? I woke feeling cold and looked up to see my younger brother Stokes leaving. The fire had gone out and the deer skin that my mother Fennel had draped carefully over me last night had fallen off, so my bare feet could feel the chilly autumn breeze blowing in. It was time to get up. Emerging from the teepee, I looked out at the hills beyond our camp to see the sun slowly rising. I had jobs to do that morning, but first I had to help my brother to gather some breakfast. We took our rabbit skin bags to the edge of the wood where the blackberries grew and filled them up to the brim. We couldn't resist gobbling a few berries as we picked because the hunters had not had a successful day out yesterday and we had only had a baby deer to share between our large family of 24, so we were ravenously hungry. So this tells us about the life of a stone-nosed child. We can gather information from this. So we can see that they hunted and they gathered their food. They couldn't go to Sainsbury's or Tesco's and just go and get their meat. They had to actually hunt for it and gather it in the Stone Age. We also know that they ate blackberries and that they had quite strange names compared to the names we have today, like Stokes and Fennel. So from these diary entries, historians can have a read of them and they can find out about what life was like. So one of the first features of a diary entry is it always starts Dear Diary. The diary is who the person is writing to. So that is the audience. So just like when you start a letter, dear sir or madam or dear Miss Bailey, we'd write dear diary. And it's always on the left hand side of the page and it has a comma after it. So dear diary and then comma on the left hand side of the page. Then we leave a line underneath. That's really important. The second feature is it includes questions, usually rhetorical questions. So shall I tell you what I did? So you're asking that question to the diary and it's rhetorical. So we're not asking for an answer back. We're not asking for the diary to respond, but we're putting those questions in there. So usually it includes questions. The next feature of a diary entry is it's usually written in chronological order. That means it's written in the order that you've done those things. So for example, you're not going to say, dear diary, I went to sleep at 10 p.m. I had my breakfast because you usually eat your breakfast before you're going to sleep at 10 p.m. So it's written in the correct order that you did those things. Also in a diary entry, you don't have to include every single thing that you did. So we don't need to know that you brush your teeth for exactly 35.675 seconds. Um, you just want to use those key events that you want to remember when you look back at your diary. It needs to have time connected. So firstly, I woke up and I did this. Then I decided to do this. Next, after that, lastly, eventually, sometime later, afterwards, finally. So lots of different time connectives in different paragraphs 
to show that it's following on from one another. When we use firstly, that's to introduce the first idea. So you can't then use firstly three paragraphs down and start with firstly. Same with secondly. Secondly introduces the second idea or the second paragraph. Thirdly, the third paragraph. So you can't just use firstly, secondly, thirdly, randomly, sporadically throughout those paragraphs. They've got to make sure that they go in the correct order. That's one thing that a lot of you tend to do an error on. It needs to include lots of description of what you did, what time you did it at, how it made you feel. So adding lots of information. So when you look back 10 years later, you can read that diary entry and there's a picture in your mind being created of what you did, how you felt during that time, what time it happened at, how much you ate, how delicious it was. So looking at all those things. And thinking about your thoughts and feelings, how you were feeling at that time is really important. You need to use pronouns, I did this, we did this, they did this. So looking at those to make it personal to you and also you're writing about yourself. So you're gonna be using, I went to the shops, we then walked the dog, um, if you're speaking about things that you did with your family or your friends. And like I said earlier, feelings and emotions. So you're telling the diary exactly how you feel. Lots of people use a diary because sometimes they can't explain how they feel to the people that they love. So they might say exactly how they feel in this. So for example, when I lived with my mum, she used to always go into my room and she used to say, Miss Ben, you need to empty your bin. And I might write in my diary, today my mum stormed into my room like a crazy woman and asked me to empty my bin that only had one piece of paper in it. One piece of paper. I do not need to empty my bin when there's only one piece of paper in it. It was not even full. So I'm saying my real feelings in that diary entry. What I might have actually said to my mum at the time was, okay mum, and then I would have emptied it. So you can say in that diary exactly how you feel at that time. Something that you might not say to the person who's making you feel like that. So I'm feeling extremely upset today because Molly at school was really unkind. She said that I couldn't play. So that's an example of you explaining exactly what's happened and how you're feeling about that situation. And another feature is the date. That's usually in the right hand corner, right at the top. So it tells you when the diary entry was written. So then you can look back and have a look. Oh yeah, on this day, this is what I did on that day. So I'm going to show a diary entry that I've done with my class previous that was linked to the book Kid Normal, which is basically a superhero book. Really, really cool book. And we did loads of diary entries on that, but I'm going to adapt it. So we started off in our original one, Saturday the 5th of March 2016, dear diary, today's been the worst day of my life so far, why? It was moving day, I've moved so many times over the years, I've lost count, but today was the worst move by far. And that links to the first chapter in the book where Murph is moving house, and he's moved so many times with his mum and his brother, that he's starting to get extremely upset about the fact that he has to keep moving house and moving schools, and that he can't keep his friends. So you've got to decide which day you are recounting. So it could be any of the days that you've had, but you've got to be able to remember what you've done. So I'm going to imagine that this happened yesterday. So I'm thinking about my day yesterday because I can remember exactly what I did in my mind and in my memory. I can imagine exactly how I feel as well. I know how I felt. Um, so you might describe your day as amazing, as boring, as stressful, as fun, as relaxing, as terrible, as dreadful, as fun-filled you can describe how your day was. And we're going to adapt that beginning bit. So, instead of, oh, sorry. So instead of saying, dear diary, today's been the worst day of my life so far, you might say, today's been the best day of my life so far, or today has been the most fun day of my life so far, or the most boring day of my life so far. So I've kept mine quite similar to show you the little change that I've made. So. Tuesday the 12th of May 2020, dear diary, today's been the worst day ever, why? England is in lockdown because of corona and everything I did today went wrong. So I've started with dear diary, I've put my date in so I know what day this happened on. I'm explaining what my day was like, um, so I've said it's the worst day ever. I've put my rhetorical question in, why? And then I've said why, so I've said England's in lockdown because of coronavirus and everything I did yesterday went wrong. So I'm opening that up so I know that everything from now on is showing that the day did not go very well. 
Then looking at our first paragraph. So this was the original one. First, I was forced to wake up early because mum was stressing and trying to get everything ready for the move. It took so long to get everything packed up and into the van that I didn't even get to eat breakfast. I knew it was going to be a bad day. So again, that links to our first chapter for Kid Normal. So we've now got to think about what we did first. So having to think about your day yesterday or whatever day you want to account, what did you do first? Did you wake up and your parents and carers had made the best American breakfast ever? It had pancakes, it had syrup, it had bacon, it had fruit, it had yogurt, it had everything you could possibly want. Was it an amazing day? Did you fall out of bed and hurt yourself? Did you wake up late from your alarm and you had to race to work? Did you just watch TV? Did you have a terrible night's sleep the night before? So you woke up really groggy and feeling horrible. You've got to then explain that. So think about what you did first. So, my day. First, I woke up really, really early after a terrible night's sleep and had the same breakfast that I have every single day, cornflakes, and I put that in brackets because if I wanted to, I could take that cornflakes out and the sentence would still make sense. So for example, and had the same breakfast that I have every single day. That sentence would make sense without cornflakes and it also makes sense with cornflakes in it. It was raining so heavily that I thought it was going to smash the glass windows. After that, I remembered that I had all of my chores to do. I wish I'd stayed in bed. I hate cleaning. So in that section, I said how I woke up, what I had for breakfast, the boring old cornflakes, and then what I had to do next and how I feel. Okay, I wish I'd stayed in bed. I hate cleaning. So in this section, we're starting with our first, which is really important. So first, I woke up really, really, I'm using exaggeration there because I'm doing really twice to try and emphasise how early I woke up at. And I'm saying about a terrible night's sleep, I ate my breakfast, what the weather was like, it was raining, you might want to describe that in yours, maybe it was beautiful and sunny like it has been the last few days. Um, and then how I felt, so I had to do the cleaning, I hate cleaning, I wish I'd stayed in bed. The next section, then we made the journey to the new house. How boring it was. It was new, all right. It looked as if it, as if it had only just been built. It looked nothing like any of the other houses that we had lived in. I missed my old house already. So again, that's the original one from the Kid Normal book that we did previously. So, what did you do after that? So after I decided to have my breakfast and then I knew I had to do all the chores, what am I gonna do next? So I know in mine, my next bit is I'm going to do all the chores, but then what did I do after that as well? Did I watch telly? Did I make something? Did I bake cakes? Did I go and walk the dog? Did I go for a walk? Think about the things that you did next that are significant. You're not going to say, I went to the toilet for exactly five seconds, then I brushed my teeth, then I washed my hands with soap for 20 seconds, singing happy birthday. Um, think about particular things that you want to recount on that day. So it could be you had your lunch. You did some homework, you made something, you watched a film. So again, I started with the same time connected then. After I finished all of my chores, I had a shower and walked my dog, Lucky. Again, in brackets, because I could take that out and the sentence would still make sense without it. She was being an absolute nightmare. She ran off once I took her off the lead and wouldn't come back. It was also raining still, so I got drenched. What a miserable day it was. So I've said I've done my chores, then I got dressed and walked my dog, then I've explained a bit about walking my dog, that she was an absolute nightmare. I kept shouting her name, looky, looky, and she was just running further and further off and not coming back to me. She was being very disobedient. So again, I'm explaining what happened and how I feel. And I've used an exclamation sentence there, so what a miserable day it was. So you might be recounting something really nice that you did. Maybe you made a Lego castle or you bake cakes with your parents and carers. So it might be, what a wonderful day it was. Um, but in mine, it's what a miserable day it was. I'm talking about it raining, I'm drenched, I'm cold, the dog's not doing what I need it to do. I'm in a very bad mood. Then back to the original, so the next paragraph. As I carried boxes into the new house, comma, mum showed me to my new room. It was painted green. Green! Why would anybody paint a room green? Rhetorical question. It was horrible. I just wished I could be back in my old room. 
Now, we know in this one, we're not gonna be talking about moving house. So again, we're thinking about the next thing that we do. So once I've walked the dog, obviously I need to come back home and I'm drenched. So I might need to change my clothes and get warm and then I might watch a film or I might do something else. So when I got home, comma, I got out of my soggy clothes and had a nice warm bath. It was heaven, exclamation mark. So that exclamation sentence in there. I wondered what my friends and family were doing right now. I wish I could see them and give them a big hug. Why can't Corona just go away? I wish everything was just back to normal again. So in this section, I'm saying about going home from walking the dog, I have a nice bath, and then I'm thinking, I'm reflecting on the fact that we're in this lockdown, I can't see my friends, I can't see my family, I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling down, I'm thinking about them. Because in 10 years time, when I look back at this diary entry, I'll be saying, right, on this day we were in lockdown, this is part of history, and this is exactly how I was feeling, I was missing my friends, I was missing my family. And that's fine, all of us are feeling that at the minute. It's important that we get that down so then when we remember when all this is over, how fortunate we are after all of this. So thinking about when I got home is my sentence starter, yours could be after that, later on, whatever you decide. Original one, finally, after a terrible day, mum got us a Chinese. At least one good thing happened today, I suppose. Ending it with mer, because he was the one writing. So in my one, Finally, so I've used that same time connected. After the most boring day ever, I snuggled up on the sofa, ate my body weight in chocolate and watched my favourite film to make myself feel better. I needed an early night, so I went to bed at 10 p.m. Miss Baby. So I signed it from myself and you'll be doing exactly the same thing. So again, we're thinking about what we did at the end of that day. Before you went to sleep, what did you do? Did you watch Netflix? Did you watch your favourite programme? Did you have a tantrum? Did you read a book? Did your parents and carers do something nice and snuggle you into bed? You're describing what you did finally. So finally is the last thing you did. So you're not then going to say, finally I went to sleep, then I did this. Because the final thing is the last thing you did before you went to sleep. And then you can sign it. So, thinking about our diary entry and writing it ourselves. Remember, it's on your day, whatever day you choose. We're going to think about writing it. So mine is from yesterday which was Tuesday. The 12th of May, 2020. So I'm writing that down in the right hand corner. Then, not on the same line, the line underneath, on the left hand side, I start dear, Diary, so who I'm writing to. So dear, big capital D. And diary needs a big capital D because it's the name. And then I use a comma at the end. So dear diary. Then I'll start writing underneath. So I'm saying what the day was like. So today was the... So today was the worst day ever and ever I could choose to do in massive capital letters because I'm trying to emphasize what a bad day it was exclamation mark then I'm saying why with my question my rhetorical question so dear diary today was the worst day ever why so I might put England was still in lockdown and I was bored of doing the same things every day. So again, I've changed it from my original one. Tuesday the 12th of May 2020, dear diary, comma, today, remembering that capital letter, really important, let's see if I can get, so we need that capital letter there, capital letter there, capital letter there, comma there. Today was the worst day ever, why? England, we need that capital letter because it's a name of country, we're still in lockdown, I was bored of doing the same things every day. Then I'm going to start, firstly, I did this. So when I'm starting with a new paragraph, I need to leave a line. 
So here's my line here. I'm going to leave it and I'm going to start underneath. So firstly, and after that time connective, we need a comma. Capital letter firstly, beginning of a sentence. So firstly, I woke up extremely early after a terrible night's sleep. So I might even extend that. So firstly, I woke up extremely early, comma, after a terrible night's sleep with a headache. And then I might put typical. So I took some paracetamol and started to get to work on the chores that I need to do for today. So I want you to see now whether you can create your own diary entry. Remember, you're using time connectives. Really important. So if I draw a clock, so you want time connected in there. Firstly, next, afterwards, then. So then, firstly, next, later on. Finally, all of those things. You need to start with the diary and the date. Don't forget that comma on the end. And we want the date as well. That's another really important thing. So we've got start with the date in the right hand corner. We've got the diary in the left. We want time connectives. We want description. Describe what you're doing. Don't just say, I watched a film. What was the film? How long did it go on for? What happened in the film? How did that film make you feel? Was it a good film? Was it a rubbish film? You need to explain. We also want your feelings and emotions. It was the worst day ever. It was the best day ever. I had so much fun. Explain how you're feeling when you're doing those activities. We want rhetorical questions in there. Things like, why are we still in lockdown? We also want some exclamation sentences. What a terrible day it is. How horrible the weather is. So using that what and the how. Remembering we know that questions also start with what and also start with how, but when we're writing a question, we're asking for information in return. What a terrible day it is, is not asking for information back, but what is the weather like today is asking for information. So what a terrible day it is would be an exclamation sentence. What is the weather like today would be a question because you're asking for that information for someone to respond. Oh, it's raining or oh, it's going to be sunny with a bit of wind. And then closing it with your name. So, Miss Bailey. And don't forget those paragraphs. So it's nice and clear. So when you come back in 10 years time and read it, it's not all in one paragraph and you're reading it without any breath. You need to make sure it's nice and clear so you can see exactly what you've done in each of those paragraphs. Have fun writing your own diary entry, recounting your time in lockdown.